poor prison conditions are typical in many countries, and Uruguay is no exception. In Uruguay, however, the government has acknowledged there's a problem and is taking action to remedy the situation. Three years ago, the government invited the special rapporteur on torture, Mr. Manfred Novak, to visit the country. At that time, prisons in Uruguay were holding 130% more than the recommended number of detainees. The government of Uruguay is now partnering with United Nations agencies on a program of reform in the prison system. We look at the impact of the joint UN Delivering as One approach in Uruguay's prison system. A spreadsheet in a computer lab. But this is no ordinary computer class, nor is the instructor a free man. 54-year-old Ney Herbert Cafaso Barbosa is an inmate at Comca Rieles Maximum Security Prison in Uruguay. Desarrollar planes que sean realmente efectivos para la enseñanza en cárcel. A través de la informática, que es lo que yo domino, ¿verdad? Ese sería lo que yo tengo planificado para mi futuro. For now, he's working towards performing well at the Punta Rehabilitation Center. Barbosa was transferred here through a court order and is serving the rest of his sentence teaching visiting students from other prisons. He lectures up to 225 prisoners in groups of 15, thanks to a large donation of used computers. If it was possible to ignore the perimeter fence and watchtower, it would be quite possible to mistake this place for a church or an adult learning classroom. But these are prison inmates undertaking different programs, mostly aimed at life after prison. Cosas a corto plazo y cosas a mediano y largo plazo. A corto plazo termina el hacinamiento. Y el objetivo más ambicioso era el de basarse eh, la rehabilitación en el trabajo, el estudio, la recreación. The minister's position is reiterated by Uruguay's parliamentary commissioner in charge of prisons. Llegó una situación de emergencia dentro del sistema penitenciario y en los últimos años eh, se ha eh, comenzado a revertir esta emergencia. Se han construido locales, se ha avanzado en materia de educación y de trabajo y es probable que si se mantiene el rumbo en los próximos cinco años eh, se pueda tener un panorama distinto. Similarly, inmate Walter Paparam Borda has been locked up for 20 years in different prisons. At the time of filming this video, he had a few days to go before his release from Centro de Rehabilitación Punto de Rieles, where he arrived in 2011. Yo me, falta, me faltarían cuatro días para irme en libertad. Tengo una oportunidad de trabajo, se me brindó. Quiero aprovecharla, estar al lado de mis hijas, de mi señora y mi familia. Y salir adelante y reivindicarme con la sociedad. Yo tuve muchos años preso, tuve 20 años preso. Y gracias a montones de comandos que han pasado por delante mío, me han dado oportunidad para aprender un oficio. Walter is looking forward to walking out a free man with new skills as a blacksmith. Now he will be able to earn his wage in the labor market, which is the aim of the program. Uruguay is one of eight pilot countries in the UN Joint Interagency Development Program, Delivering as One. The joint UN and Uruguay government prison project aims to ensure that detainees' human rights are upheld. Susan McDade, UN resident coordinator in Uruguay, lauds the cooperation with the government, noting that there are many political leaders in the country that have experienced life in prison and really understand from a personal point of view that conditions must be improved. When the United Nations started working on prison reform in Uruguay, there were really two goals. One was to help the people who manage prisons and supervise prisons take a more human rights-based approach to the rights of prisoners. And the second was to really look at how to have a rehabilitation focus so that the prisoners themselves, when they would get out, could return to normal society. At that time, many prisoners were in mixed prisons, irrespective of the nature of the crime they were committed. And um, in some cases, the majority of people were actually pending sentence and had not yet been sentenced. The penitentiary system in Uruguay has a total of 29 similar detention centres. So far, 800 prison officials have gone through various human rights training. 
several UN agencies advise on relevant international human rights standards. UNICEF has been key on issues relating to juvenile justice. And UN Women is carrying out a vulnerability study on women in prisons, including those who are pregnant or breastfeeding children, a major concern highlighted by the Special Rapporteur. The International Labour Organization advised on a draft bill on labour rights in prisons, with a view to facilitating the social reintegration of inmates when they're released. The UN Human Rights Regional Office has provided expert advice, including training, and works closely with the Ministry of Interior and authorities in the prison system in Uruguay. Kiong Wa Kang, the Deputy High Commissioner for the UN Human Rights Office, recently visited detention centres in the country. But what was amazing to me was how, how much can be done uh, with a government that is willing to take on board recommendations coming from the international, international human rights uh, system, but also how it really took an outsider with a fresh pair of eyes to come in and, and focus on the problem areas. This is a country where the president himself was a, a political prisoner and had been in uh, solitary confinement for many years. But it took somebody from the outside to come in and point to areas of, of problems and, and needing immediate reform. And, and I think this clearly illustrates the usefulness of uh, the UN's assistance to countries in development in various sectors of society, security sector reform included, and the advice of the uh, hu human rights mechanisms can provide um, to a government that is willing and willing to take them on board and welcoming of the international cooperation that is a rights-based approach. Hemos recibido también una ayuda muy importante en todo lo que tiene que ver con con el, el aspecto laboral para la inclusión de esas personas en el, en el mercado de trabajo a futuro, este, garantizando una, una política de inclusión social que, que les permita ser útiles a sí mismos, a su familia y a la comunidad. ¿no? And as the old adage says, a stitch in time saves nine. So for Barbosa and other inmates here, time spent in learning new skills gives them hope for a better life after living behind bars. Y hacer cosas buenas para que mi, mi familia, mis hijos puedan ver que a de lo peor se puede llegar a sacar algo bueno, ¿no? Barbosa has four more years in remand and looks forward to using his newfound skills to build a new and productive life when he regains his freedom. <laughs>